I have no uh, systems, no, no ideas how it should be done. I find it on the set. So it's like with the script, I even can shoot on the set. I can accept shooting on the set I even don't know. I've never seen before. It's, it's like uh, meeting somebody else, you know. You have to adapt right away to the situation. <clears throat> and I never was after beauty, because I think pure beauty destroys the drama very often. Except when beauty was, would be an integral part of, of the story. I remember it was very low key, very uh, low light, and in such a way that uh, we had to actually use the street lamps as lighting. So, I mean, very, very low uh, fill light, so you will see, even when there is no light, you would still see them. But then at every street pole light would have an effect on the scene, so that's why you have the moving lights, they were real. I think I was on 1.4, it was wide open lens. Luckily we had, didn't have a scene outside that you had to see, because you become out of focus, of course. You have to make your choice there. Blocking is the most important thing. So you must make a light where the blocking can take place. And if it's a general light, like this grey light in prison, then you have it actually, huh? it is to the light the, the prisoners live in also. Not moody or whatever, it is just straightforward prison. That lighting in the cell was not very great or exceptional. But also, Jim wanted in, in to not see the difference between day and night in the cell. So it had a kind of general the lighting they have already only a bit, a bit, a bit stronger for the film, for the negative. It was it was quite quite simple. You know, I thought only what was very funny their escape out of prison, where we skipped the whole thing. How they do it? Many films you see endless things. How they get out of there? And this was and we could easily skip it for the story because it was not interesting enough to see how they do it. So that's why we had to find a location where they suddenly be, would be free or, or show some way they went. And sewers seemed to be a very good idea. Yeah, it, was, it was pitch dark, of course, there. And the only way you could, to light was showing light coming from outside. It reflects in the water against the wall. And you see the tunnel then also. Maybe it's too beautiful, but it was the only way to do it. What was more interesting was the duckweed. Because the duckweed, when it goes through the swamps or bajou, they get lost there. And normally you, you leave traces. But here, duckweed was cut open by the boat, but closed again. So it took a long, enough distance to show that they really had no way back to find a way back. And that's those big helpers in Duckweed. Yeah, it, uh, the boat was rather unsinkable, we discovered. And we had a kind of mechanism put on the, f on the bottom of the water with controls, so you see it, wheels, and we from outside the shot, we pulled it down. First we made it very heavy, so it would go some, a little bit down. And we really had to pull very hard to get the boat down. It's always difficult to make night lighting, because you have to see something, and therefore you have to make light. And like, <clears throat> you must fake it a bit, that you see what you want to see, and still are not too obvious lighting a scene. It should still stay night. I like this little rabbit. What the eye is of the rabbit? Ah! Suddenly, boom, the rabbit dead. We had in the scene where Alberto has his long monologue about the, the rabbit. We, are, we actually have the light tower in the shot. It was draped with black cloth, so you wouldn't see it. 
So they can come from more from above and not have no lamps in the trees or in the shot. And say maybe a rich production would have made the same towers but farther away and higher. And would have been a day preparation before you could shoot. And now we had less preparation.